Good morning, everybody. Yes, it, it is a good morning. Sun's out, crisp day. This is Worship at Emmanuel. And if you look at the front of the bulletin, we are breaking bonds, changing patterns, and pursuing the spirit. That's a lot to do in one day, so as my granddaughter says, buckle up. This is the time for announcements. I know we have a special Sunday school, and uh, I can announce it if you wish. You want to announce Sunday school? Yeah. Good morning, church. This is a big day. We're having a potluck. But before we get to eat, we hear from, uh, we, we'll hear from um, Julie Hart who is here with us today. She's uh, going to give a presentation about aphasia, uh, different forms of it and what you can do to, um, to communicate with someone with aphasia. So, and um, I'm sure she won't hold up lunch too much. Everybody hates to be the last speaker before lunch, right? <laughs> or before, well, I also, yeah, also after, after, the, after lunch, the after dinner speaker. Is there any good time to speak? Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Julie is the uh, director of the aphasia program. At, as she was at St. Rose. It's now been ported over to, um, to Russell Sage. And, um, you know, it, it serves an awful lot of people in the Capital District. And um, there's like s one cause of aphasia is stroke, of course. Um, 795,000 strokes in the United States every year, um, about 30 to 40 some percent of them uh, result in aphasia. That's just one source of um, aphasia. So Julie will talk more about that later. So welcome. So um, it's a small group. If anybody has been out shopping this past week or two, you may have noticed that the newest decorations in the seasonal aisle are Christmas. So um, I thought, okay, I guess I should see what I'm supposed to be doing and look at on my calendar and it says Advent Planning Committee. And I'm supposed to call that committee to order. Well, we have a few names of people who are serving on that committee, but I think that we need um, different people than the ones who always do it because I think there may be more ideas than I know about. Um, so if there's somebody who um, would like to be involved in planning some of things that uh, for Advent, there's some things that we kind of always do or we've always done it for the past two years. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you, know, I, you know, like going caroling um, and caroling to, to some of our shut-ins, that's one of the things. But there's a whole bunch of things, and maybe there's something that I haven't thought of yet. Um, so this is not a committee that's going to meet for hours and hours or that you're going to have to make a thousand phone calls. This is a, a, a group that wants to get together and say, I think it would be neat to do this and this for Advent. And, and then if somebody else says, wow, great idea, then we've got a team and we're doing something. So I would welcome anybody who's not ever done it before or hasn't done it in a long time who would like to be involved, let me know and I'll put your email down. Thank you. So that's one of those short-term commitments that you might sign up for. Um, I wanted to note that I was here yesterday for Jean Blaby's funeral. It was quite inspiring. The seats were filled. And it speaks to the legacy that they left in this church and the mark that this church left on that family. Um, and it also reminds me that this Saturday, we're looking forward, trying to discern God's calling so I invite you all to remember to come. <clears throat> if you get here by 8.30, you'll have some warm cinnamon buns, yum, 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 coffee, tea. <coughs> um, 
and it should be an, a, uh, a very good morning of conversation, um, prayer, and trying to figure out kind of what direction we will have and what legacy all of us will leave with this church. It's this Saturday, November 2nd. Prepare yourselves for worship. That's why we're here. And listen to the prelude. Let us call ourselves to worship. Please join me in our responsive reading. We have grown familiar with chains, stumbled into by accident or carefully crafted by our own vice. We have become used to their cold weight. At times, we even draw comfort from them, finding a broken sense of identity in our victimhood or a platform for our self-righteous anger and violence. And so our world remains imprisoned by the way we choose control and aggression over peace and mutual understanding, by the way we idolize quick answers and quick wealth over preservation and careful management of natural resources. By the way, we allow our self-interest and greed to overshadow the lives of the poor and hungry who die each day. 
By the way, we prefer hiding in a fortress of pride over making things right and letting others into our hearts. But if we will listen, we can hear a voice making a new way through this desert, offering a new hope and gently seeking to loosen the chains. Help us, Jesus, to follow this voice. Lead us like a shepherd. Save us and free us so that as our chains fall away, we may help to loose the chains of others. I invite you to rise in body and spirit as we sing hymn 749. You may be seated. Let us pray. Faithful, loving God, we bring our fragmented lives into the presence of your wholeness. We bring our wandering thoughts into your eternal life. We bring our restless spirits into your calming strength. May we remember that all we have comes from you and that you have entrusted us with all that we have. Help us now to quiet ourselves, to listen for your voice. Give us hope 
and courage to act justly and lovingly. We pray together in the name of Jesus, who taught us to say, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, uh, this is the children's time. The kids can stay where you are. And uh, adults, you better listen. Okay, because the kids do. So uh, today, there's no sermon, kids. So, uh, But it's kind of a strange thing, because like a couple weeks ago, the scripture, the, the part of the gospel we hear, is repeated three times. And that sounds kind of boring. So I'm going to tell you first the, the story of the, of the scripture, so you know what the story is. Then I'll tell you the story of little big girl today. Okay, so here's the story of the gospel, so you know what that's all about. So Paul and Silas, remember those two? They, they traveled together. They were in a city, and... Uh, they went to a place to pray, and they found this slave girl who was a fortune teller. She was really good at it. She was kind of a little, let's say she had a mental health problem. Uh, so people said she was possessed, but let's say she had a mental health problem. But she was a slave. You know, they were slavery back then. And uh, she made money for her masters by telling fortunes. She made a lot of money. and. Uh, and she found Paul and said, this person and Silas work for the best God. And uh, listen to him because he knows what he's talking about. But you know something? Paul didn't, he was irritated by that for some reason because maybe this person was a little bit crazy when she said it. And finally, he said, get out of here, demon, and cured her from her kind of craziness and she wasn't a fortune teller after that and guess what her masters said you ruined our business you 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 made her whole you made her healthy and we can't use her anymore what a crazy thing to say they fixed he fixed her and it didn't work for them so they beat Paul and Silas up and they brought him before the judge and the judge said well, you ruined their business. Throw them in jail, but beat them up again. And they did. They beat them up again, and then they threw them in jail. They didn't belong there. They didn't do anything wrong, but they threw them in jail. So in jail, Paul and Silas were singing songs and telling all the prisoners about Jesus. They did that all day and all night. And the warden, the, the, the person who kept the jail, listened for a while, but I think he fell asleep. And then at midnight, there was an earthquake, huge earthquake, and all the doors of the jail were opened. Now the, the jailer woke up and said, uh-oh, I'm sure the jail is empty. Now the Roman law said, you know, the jailer was responsible for everybody in the jail, and if everybody ran away, who was going to get, who was going to get in trouble? the jailer, right? So if the jailer got in trouble, he knew he was going to get killed. So he said, I might as well kill myself because they're going to kill me and it's not going to be pretty. So, but he went into the jail and he found every single prisoner there. And Paul and Silas were still singing about Jesus, having a good old time with, with all the prisoners. And he said, what is going on here? And Paul and Silas said, let me tell you about Jesus. And, uh, and the jailer said, this is amazing. Tell me the whole story. And they did. And he said, no, no. Come to my house and tell my whole house the whole story. I want them to hear it too. And they did. And the whole house became Christian that night. What a crazy story, huh? Now, we have to figure out who was in prison. 
Some people say it was a slave girl. She was a slave. Some people, people say it was Paul and Silas, but they were having a good old time in that jail, even though they got beat up. Some people say the prisoner was actually the jailer because he was in a terrible job. Some people say it was the other prisoners. You have to figure that out, okay? So here's the story. Now you can listen to the real story. So who hasn't been bullied sometime in their life? Hmm. Everybody's been bullied a little bit, probably, but not big girl. Who would bully the tallest person in the world, right? That would be something a foolish person would do until one of her classmates found her diary. Yeah, in the diary, she wrote about how much she hated her hairdo she wrote about her teeth that weren't straight. She wrote about the pimples she was getting, that her nose was too big, and that she hated that she was too tall. But it was so private and so personal. She didn't want anybody to know about it. But the bully found the diary, and every day he would say something like, how's your pimples doing, big girl? Gee, that nose, I think it's about long enough to reach Los Angeles, don't you? And your hair, oh my gosh, it's in the clouds. I think it's causing rain because it's so straggly. Every day he would say something. Big girl was not doing well with this. She cried all the time. She didn't want to see her friends. She couldn't stop thinking about it. So she stayed in her room. She wouldn't come out. She just kept thinking and thinking about her hair, her nose, her pimples, how tall she was. She was so embarrassed and she became depressed. She would not come out of her room. It was really serious. She stopped eating. Everybody noticed and it was very serious. And then grandma noticed. She tried to open the door, it was locked. And then she said, okay, this has got to stop. And she said to the little man, go get a ladder. I've got to talk to her. The little man said, okay, I got a ladder. <laughs> and uh, grandma said, no, wrong ladder. That's not gonna do it. Uh, no, not that ladder. It's not big enough. So he went to the fire company, got the biggest hook and ladder they had. They set it up in the house, and she climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed until she finally reached big girl's ear. And she whispered inside her ear. And she said, when you're ready to be free, of what's keeping you a prisoner. You'll be set free of your worry. Do you remember the story of Jesus? Do you believe that he loves you and that he knows all about you? Whatever it is that's holding you in and hurting you, it will not and cannot stand up to the power and grace of God. So are you ready to keep yourself locked up in anger and pity, or are you ready to come out? Oh, and there's apple pie and ice cream in the fridge <laughs> when you're ready. And then she climbed down and she left. So audience, what did she do? What did big girl do? Yeah, was there an earthquake? Was the jail opened up? 
Did you hear this? Did you hear the words? Maybe because she was brought up in a manual and she heard the words for all of her life. They were always there, but somebody had to repeat them one more time. Somebody climbed the ladder and just whispered in her ear. And the apple pie helped. <laughs> so, um, so children and adults, where does freedom come from? What sets us free? What holds us back? Why are we free to go? And what makes us go? Is it the word of God that drives us or something else that really doesn't count? So listen and think from the viewpoint of yourself in this beloved community when you hear the word of, from the scripture today. The word is for you and the word is for us. Amen. Let's pray together. Creating God, we praise you for acorns and pumpkins, for maple trees and apple cider, for the peace of this place, for friends who embody love and laughter and grace for us, for your giving which knows no ending. We praise and thank you for 
safe travel and a good visit for Ruth and Ellen. God, forgive us when we miss the abundance of joy and beauty and goodness bursting out around us. Forgive us when we think there is not enough to go around. How poor we have become and how poor we have made others, simply because we forget your infinite overflowing abundance. Because we allow ourselves to think that sharing and giving leaves us with less because we nurture appetites that are never satisfied unless they have far more than is needed, thinking that our gluttony would silence our fear. Oh God, have mercy on us. Help us to transcend self-centeredness, cynicism, and fear, to feel and think and act as those who are responding to your calling on our lives a calling to give us a future and a hope. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. going to be doing a meditation of the scripture using Lexio Divina approach. Uh, for those of you who like to read along while you listen, uh, there should be a Bible somewhere near under a seat. Uh, it's Acts 16, 25 through 34. If you can't find a Bible, there's some over there. The revised, new revised standard version is what we're using. Uh, I'm just going to be giving some explanations, so if you want to run over and get one, that's fine. You should have enough time. There'll be three readings after the first reading. I'll repeat this after each reading. Uh, basically, you'll have a, just a, a few seconds to think about what was read, and then I'll give an indication that you can say out loud, each of you at the same time, uh, a word or a phrase that struck you. Okay, so we'll all say in unison whatever word it was. So it'll be a word jumble. And those online can ch put it in the chat, or you can say it out loud to yourselves, or you can unmute yourself if you so desire. But it's probably easier not to unmute yourself and just put it in the chat or just say it out loud. Uh, this, after the second reading, uh, people in the, in the room will have a chance to meet with two or three people around them to have a short discussion about uh, the context of what it means to you and what it might mean to Emmanuel. It's not meant to be a long discussion, but something that's particularly meaningful for you. Uh, and then the third time, uh, it, it'll be sharing with the entire room, so people who wish to can, s again, say something relatively short using the microphone and the people on Zoom can use the chat, and we'll read some of the most uh, some of the comments from chat. So you understand how that's going to work, okay? So the first time around, listen for a word or a phrase that speaks to us today. Reflect in silence. When asked, say your word or phrase out loud, or show a picture. You can certainly draw if you wish to. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everybody's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. 
But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. If you would just say that phrase or word out loud. Just everyone's chains were unfastened. Okay. The second reading, second time around, will be read by Kathy Donnelly. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Please find two or three people to share your thoughts, what the phrase might mean, what it might speak to you about this current context of Emmanuel and the context of the ancient text. Okay, thank you for what looks like very active participation. The third uh, reading will happen right now. Afterwards, you are invited. It's not mandatory for anyone who would like to share out loud using the microphone or in chat. Uh, that'll happen after the reading. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. 
The jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour on the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. If you have something you would like to share, I'll bring the mic to you. Anyone? Well, three times, <laughs> three different directions. So this time I heard the word earthquake. So the word earthquake to me is something really unusual that um, woke up this um, scene. So I, I guess I'm thinking, should I wait for an earthquake or should I, <laughs> should I, <laughs> should I be more proactive and look for um, a, a chink in my uh, self-imposed prison? So this third time around, the first two times I was thinking about the door is open. The doors are open. But then I was thinking about foundations being shaken, the very foundations being shaken. And uh, I think we've, we've got earthquakes. We've got earthquakes right now. We just got to find the open door. Sorry, that's an, an open text enough that, you know, you interpret it any way you like. Well, I was stuck on the phrase, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, which actually for Emmanuel, we don't say that very often. Yeah, I was thinking that um, we have good news to share and people are needing to hear it. So we have to be more proactive about sharing it. So I'm going to read from the chat first. Um, Maria's word was suddenly. And she says, suddenly a change is happening, and it's easy to say when the change happened, but the change was to the building and the guard, not the protagonists. And then she wrote, um, a major change is coming, and we will know it, but we will still be Emmanuel on the other side of it. Um, and my phrase, at, and at, again, like some other people, I think it changed through the readings, um, but my phrase was, we are still here. And that was a challenge to me to stop recognizing myself or ourselves as prisoners. Um, but then the other word that came, that hit me in this last reading, was, the, the phrase was when the guard took them outside. Is that when they knew that they were not actually prisoners? So I have to think about it. Recognize that Paul was playing a game the whole time. He knew he was a Roman citizen and he was free the whole time. first reading or so struck me that this was all about the guard. <clears throat> he had probably heard about Christ being preached about. It didn't mean anything to him until there was this cataclysmic event that got his attention and he saw 
that things didn't, it was like a miracle. Um, the, peop, the prisoners were freed, but they didn't leave. And that's what got his attention to say, what do I need to do? Um, but then by the third one, <clears throat> and how it affects Emmanuel, I think our foundations are definitely shaking. Um, the question is, are our chains released so that we can be free to do something else? Thank you all for participating. If you look in your bulletin, it might be on the screen. Uh, there's a prayer f to end this, Lexio. Lord, we are using the practice of Lexio Divina as a tool to help us hear the book of Acts for a new day. Please help us place our minds and hearts into thinking about the meaning of this passage, to hear the Spirit speaking through the words for us today as individuals and as members of Emmanuel. Send us an earthquake of the Spirit to wake us up out of our own self-constructed prisons. Help us hear the words of freedom you have set forth in the language of love and service. Help us prepare our household for your great word and let it transform our lives. Amen. Please stand if you're able for him, 275, Heine Festeberg, a mighty fortress is our God.
That hymn is associated with Martin Luther, and we sing it often on this Sunday because in many traditions today is Reformation Sunday. And I would suggest that just as there was an earthquake of disruption in the first century in the book of Acts, and there was an earthquake of disruption at the time of the Protestant Reformation, we are currently in that same kind of time. And the kind of upheaval and uh, change that the Protestant Reformation brought about is what we could be on the verge of if we choose to participate in the uh, leading of the Spirit in this time. Also, while Pat Campbell is not on Zoom and not present, I wanted to say that November 20th is her birthday. So you might uh, think about that, think about sending her a card. And now would you receive a benediction? May the Lord Christ go before you to prepare your way. Christ beside you be companion to you everywhere you go. Christ beneath you to strengthen and sustain you when you fall or fail. Christ behind you to finish and complete what you must leave undone. Christ within you to give you courage and hope, faith, and love. But mostly Christ above, bless and keep you now and evermore. Amen. Amen.